Haven. While on a mission to a planet called Haven, Troy meets her husband-to-be from a marriage arranged by their parents years before. The opening is Riker looking at his softcore porn. It's about time we got some deep character insight into Riker. I also think it's an interesting choice to have him looking directly into the camera for that entire shot. I legitimately want to know what the thinking was behind that, because there's no other way to read the scene. He's not just listening to the music, he also has that creepy smile on his face and he looks so disappointed when he gets called away. Troy gets a message and reveals that there was an arranged marriage set up years ago, and the situation becomes emotional for both her and Riker. The way the episode is written, it feels like we should already be invested in her as a character, but we don't really know anything about Troy up to this point. She hasn't really done anything. And that also applies to her relationship with Riker. We know there's something there, but we don't know any details. But it seems like we're expected to know a lot more. This is the first episode that lets Troy's character expand a little bit, and it's okay. We get some focus on her, and we also get the introduction of her mother, Loxana Troy, who feels more like a developed character than most of the other characters right from her first appearance, which is surprising given how goofy she is. Where is everyone? Oh, I hate that. <sighs> but before Loxana actually shows up, her presence is heralded by the appearance of this creepy face chest thing that she uses to send the message. I hold a message for Deanna Troy, Laxana Troy, and the Honorable Miller family will soon arrive. The momentous day is close at hand. Rejoice! <laughs> it reminded me of the Howler in Harry Potter. How dare you steal that car? I am absolutely disgusted! Your father... This is a way more comedic episode than anything that we've gotten so far, but even so, that face chest is so weird. Luaxana is set up to be a funny character, and this episode is the first intentionally funny one. Up until now, there have been some goofy things within episodes, but this one is very clear on what it's supposed to be. Part of what makes it work is Luaxana's eccentricity plays really well off of Picard, and I think playing her off him was the best choice out of the main cast. If they did something like this in a newer Star Trek movie or show, everybody would be acting goofy and over the top, but this episode keeps the characters consistent and balances the humor well. My favorite moments are one, when Picard is carrying her luggage down the corridor. Having difficulty. You know, a man your age must work to keep himself in shape. Mother, I'm not going another step like this. And two, his little bow when he is dismissed from her room. Uh, yes, Captain. Uh, you may go. and her relationship with Troy feels like more of the focus than Troy and her future husband. So much of what the crew has to deal with all the time is cultural discrepancies, and it comes up in this episode too. Troy's future husband is human, and his parents want a human ceremony, and Loxana wants a Betazoid one. I get where the parents are coming from. They're used to things being a certain way and following traditions. What irritated me was Picard saying, Trapped by a custom of her home world, which the facts of 24th century life have made unwise and unworkable. I wish I could intervene. I really like the fact that Troy's arranged husband, Wyatt, doesn't turn out to be a huge dick or have some ulterior motives because that would be an easy out, where the audience would already know what side they're on. It could easily be something where she clearly didn't want to be in that relationship and everyone was trying to help her find a way out, but he seems like an okay guy. Riker's animosity towards Wyatt seems very cartoonish. It's probably not meant to come off quite as poorly as it does in terms of how it looks on Riker. But it does. Something that stood out to me was all the characters' hairstyles when they're at the formal dinner. Tasha has 1980s storm hair. It was awesome. <laughs> when Loxana and Wyatt's parents are arguing with each other, Picard steps in and says, Ladies and gentlemen, it is a Starfleet tradition that at social gatherings, disputes are not permitted. I hereby declare, therefore, all disagreements resolved. And then everyone acts like that statement makes sense. Imagine if somebody did that in real life. People would probably either just ignore him or start yelling at him instead. As the ship is orbiting Haven, a Torellian ship shows up, and the Torellians were thought to be extinct. A few hundred years ago, two warring factions launched biological weapons at each other and ended up infecting the whole planet. They couldn't find a cure, but risked infecting anyone they came in contact with, so they were all hunted down and destroyed. So this ship has survived and is at Haven because the planet supposedly possesses some sort of healing abilities. 
I would say this is the first episode that the A and B plots really sync well together. Which is something that even a lot of the subsequent episodes don't do very well. After the Torellians show up, that B-plot gets put on hold for quite a while. They don't even contact the Torellians until the last few minutes of the episode. And Haven is even contacting them throughout saying, you have to do something. As usual, the Enterprise crew is very focused on themselves over anything else that's happening around them. The Torellians eventually tell Picard that they're not going to Haven to heal but to die. But it later turns out that even that explanation is made up. They're really going there for Wyatt. He had a psychic connection to someone that he thought was Deanna, but it turns out it's one of the Torellians. So Wyatt approaches Luxana since she's telepathic, and asks her how he's been dreaming of this woman for so many years, and all of a sudden she's real and she's right in front of him. And he asks her how does it all link up, and her explanation is basically the Force. There's one all-powerful Force controlling everything. So Wyatt takes a bunch of medical supplies over to the Torellian ship, which in turn exposes him to the virus, so he can never return. And for all the buildup of Riker being so angry that Troy's in another relationship, we never see how the two of them react to it ultimately not happening. The reason Riker hasn't carried on his relationship with Deanna is that he wants to be a Starfleet captain, which would prevent him from having a real relationship. So it seems like nothing could have happened between them anyway, there was no real reason for him to be so upset. Troy seems to understand that, but Riker does not. Just makes Riker seem even more childish. Haven. Overall? This is a decent episode but it doesn't go quite deep enough into the relationship aspects of the story. They don't feel as important as the show wants them to. Waxana feels like a well-developed character, given that this is her first appearance, but things do get a little too goofy and implausible sometimes. I would give the episode a C+. I give this one a B-. minus. I liked Loxana's introduction. I liked how the A and B plots synced up, and most characters' decisions had a sense of purpose behind them. It was good stuff. That sounds way too positive for a B-. minus. I thought it was good. That's why I gave it a higher rating. That's how it works. It's literally half a grade higher than mine. All right, whatever. If you want to do that, that's fine. Yeah, I do. If you want to dissolve all your credibility on the internet. 